Our one remaining link to the music of the late Roman world is Christian plain chant, which dates from at least the 3rd century AD. The singing of chant has always been central to Christian worship. It was a sung version of the Latin words of the Psalms and of the Eucharist or Mass. It's by default often been described as Gregorian chant after Pope Gregory the Great, who was Pope at the end of the 6th century. It's beautiful, ancient and mysterious. What it is not, we now know, is anything to do with Pope Gregory. This is one of the worst branding mistakes in cultural history. It would be like discovering the Wellington boot had nothing to do with the Duke, or that the Earl of Sandwich had nothing to do with the BLT. In the earliest form of plain chant, musical monks would sing a meandering tune with no accompaniment, no discernible rhythm and no harmonising. They are singing together in unison. chant stayed the same for centuries. But then, sometime before the 8th century, someone somewhere had the bright idea of adding some young lads to the choir. It sounds fuller and brighter with higher and lower voices combined, doesn't it? The boys sang an octave higher than the men. It's called an octave because in church music at the time there were only eight notes to choose from. On the white notes of a modern keyboard, the two lines of voices are eight notes apart. Having men and boys sing an octave apart prompted a further thought. What if we had two notes together that weren't octaves, but completely different notes taken from the choice of eight? What if they added this note, for example? Genius. They didn't go too far, mind. The new line wasn't independent, but stayed exactly in parallel to the original. This parallel lines technique, which began in around the 9th century, was called organum, because to them it sounded like an organ, which it does. What we're hearing is the first experiment in what we'd call harmony, the simultaneous sounding of more than one note. Bland and unadventurous it may seem to us now, but then, in the early hundreds, it was audio dynamite. The heady excitement of singing two notes at once had another spin-off. This time they went crazy. They stopped one of the lines moving around. In this form of organum, one singer just stays put on one note all the time. I say singer, but this technique is so boring to perform, they also used to play it on instruments instead. An organ, perhaps, or now almost forgotten instruments like the psaltery, the hurdy-gurdy, or the symphony. I'm not making this up. They really did have an instrument that played just one continuous note. They even had a name for the long-held note. It's a drone.
This drone plus tune type of plane chant is still remembered today. On bagpipes, the perforated tube you play the melody on is still called the chanter. By the 9th century, the most adventurous musicians had started to mix the two available styles together. Parallel organum and drone organum. One such adventurer was Cassia of Constantinople. She is the first female composer whose name has come down to us. What makes her music intriguing is its unusual mix of simple but unpredictable harmonies. Harmony was the first giant step our medieval ancestors took as the year 1000 drew near.